The Torres family has now united all of Sardinia. From the northern seat of their dynasty in Cesari, all the way down to the bustling trade hub of Cagliari, the long tower of our family flies, an image to be respected. Duke Castoro was a complicated man, full of the internal struggles that come with such a position. However, his legacy was cemented by his final act, which was to lead the men of Sardinia into the Holy Land and lay siege to Jerusalem herself, breaking the walls of the Holy City and bringing it back into the light of Christianity. On his return to Sardinia, after using the gold awarded to his family by the Pope to develop the island, he passed peacefully in his sleep to meet his maker. His son and heir Alessandro is a capable man, more than able to submit the legacy of his father and family. This is a time of prosperity for House Taurus, though for anything man may build, another will seek to take it from him. This is the fifth episode of a mega campaign starting in CK3 and going through Stellaris. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy, let's get into it. Alright, so Archon Alessandro is now in charge. He fought in the crusade with his father and became a crusader, fighting in the Holy Land. He's intelligent. He does have gout, which is unfortunate. He's an architect, a novice steward, as he did spend much time as the steward of uh, Sardinia. He's temperate, he's zealous, and he's impatient. He has fantastic stats. Absolutely fantastic. We're going to make him... Uh, we'll, we'll go with a uh, duty focus. We'll put all of our vassals into positions of power. Oh my god, our, our sister... Or no, our mother, Margot. She has got 23 intrigue. We're going to make her a spy master. Our son in error is Castoro. He is deceitful, cynical, and calm. He is a tough soldier and a crusader. Not particularly competent, if we're being honest. We need to find him a good wife. Agnes Vigarisha. She's chaste, fickle, and arrogant, but she's silver tongued and has a good hearing. Uh, all right, our son is getting married. We will foot the bill of that. We are going to conquer Corsica. We can form a kingdom, and the ambition of our... Past leaders have not been enough to get us where we need to be. As an impatient man, we are going to be looking to form the kingdom of Sardinia. And to do that, we will need to defeat the Archon of Corsica, Andrea, who is gluttonous and shy. Things that we would not respect. So as soon as the uh, the marriage of our son is completed, we're going to plan for it. Also, we need, to, we need to find some better clothing. I don't know who is dressing this man. Probably himself, based on the, the low quality. We'll go with a very simple circlet. We're going to write over a love poem. She didn't, she didn't like that. All right, we have gout right now. We're going to try and get treatment from our court physician and friend. Nice. And she has reduced the symptoms. Sweet Lady Theodosia, I saw you as a kneel before her. Are we a fucking simp? This sounds like simp talk right now. My only desire is to bring you honor and happiness. This man is a fucking simp. Uh, pray tell me, how can I prove my love for you? Theodosia gives me a long look. Lady Natalia's necklace is lovely, she says, and nods her head in the direction of my vassal. Uh, but it would look even better around my neck. Our wife has an STD. Can we divorce her? She's not even... She's orthodox. Well, let's make sure she converts to Catholicism. We can't be screwing a heathen. We're zealous. Our son can marry. He is our second son, I believe. Look what we found. The Habsburgs. Oda von Habsburg. All right, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna marry into the Habsburg family. What can go wrong? House Habsburg is massive. They have a hundred living members and they have seven sub-houses right now. Sweet Lady Theodosia, I saw as a nail before her. We're such a fucking simp. This is embarrassing. Why only desires to bring you happiness? Um, she wants this woman's necklace as well. Why is this woman just coveting everyone's necklace? When the raised voices reach me yet again, I quench my instinct to turn on my heel. The constant bickering of my vassal Jedi Galu and my knight Abdul Halim is enough to drive any man mad. Something must be done. I could either treat the situation as an exercise in mediation, or eavesdrop and approach one of them with my sympathies afterwards. We'll try and get them to calm down. I sit on my mug of invigorating herbal infusions, eyes scanning over my latest scrawled work. Conflict and wrath. Where other men speak silvered words, our hero himself in iron girds. His subjects prove grateful, for if they do not, their next to the door is his sword broad. Truly I am the greatest artistic mind of my age. Apparently we're a poet. I wouldn't personally call that poetry, but apparently we're a poet now. And we had we had twins too. We had Alessandro and Guiana. All right, I think it is time that we prepare a war for Corsica. Let's go talk to our bishop, Soluri, and see if we can get a claim upon Corsica. 
Bloodstained cloth, crow's feathers, a strange smelling concoctions. This is evidence presented to me by a group of villagers from Galera, the proof that Fabrizio has been practicing sorcery in his hut in the outskirts of the village. We are zealous. So we're going to burn him alive. The pleading gaze I received from my cousin Marion is taking up a desperate tone. At every fucking feast this dude comes to, he ends up like hating it because he's fucking shy. But he always comes anyway. The papacy has taken all of the coastline in Italy though. Piedmont was conquered by the Pope. He is... Before we invade, we are going to send a poem to him. About his incompetence. We humiliated him. Good. We, we sent him a humiliating poem and now we're going to invade. You see... Archon Alessandro likes to send battle poems to his enemies before he defeats them. We will get our brother to lead our forces as well. We're going to look probably form the Kingdom of Sardinia. That's the ambition of Archon Alessandro. He would like to form the Kingdom of Sardinia. Alright. We have defeated their armies. We're going to go and rout their men before we finish the Siege of Corsica here. Should be easy. Archon Andre has many things, but he is not a very competent commander that is for certain and we captured archon andrea in combat he tried to push us off the siege and in the end he found us uh, himself in our dungeon so we will end this war we have taken corsica for ourselves if we get one more province we will be able to form the duchy of corsica and then we could form the kingdom of sardinia so we are going to have to wait and then in the future we're going to start one last war of archon andrea and take everything from him and his family we'll upgrade the hill forts but we'll build ditches around our capital Again, there is always the chance of raids from the Muslims, so we have to be ready for it. We'll build a trade port in Ayasio? Ayasio? I don't know. Alright, good time to go hunting, I think. After that war, we need to de-stress. The best way to de-stress is by killing wild animals. So we're going to go do that. Poachers! Here in the Jedi's woods. They huddle together as I ride up with my guards, making a poor job of hiding the dead heart behind them. Let's see, we are impatient, zealous, and temperate. We wouldn't murder because we're zealous and we're temperate. So we're going to we're gonna offer to make them bowmen. We're zealous and we have never been on a pilgrimage. So are we going to save up to go on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem as soon as we're, we have the money for it? Jerusalem is still alive. Our cousin uh, Amadora does still control Jerusalem. He's lost most of his land though, unfortunately. To Jerusalem! We're a holy man. We're very zealous. We take our devotion to Christ very seriously. So at 52, having never gone on a pilgrimage... I think it would be important for us to go to Jerusalem. We were there before. We actually sieged out Jerusalem. Alessandro was there when the armies of his father and his cousin sieged out the holy city. But he's never traveled there as a pilgrim, only as a conqueror. We've lost our companions, but we're a holy man, and we know that God will protect us, so we don't mind. No other city in the world has a history quite like Jerusalem. In addition to the many holy sites there, the city contains the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, built over the combined places where Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected. Standing outside of the Temple Mount with my hand on the western wall, I find myself reflecting on everything that happened on my journey to this city of legend. I have walked the holy path. Let's look around the world a little bit. The Isles have gotten massive. They're really powerful. And that's Gala culture. Interesting. England's in a civil war. Shockingly, the Duchess of York is revolting. Who would have expected someone from York revolting against the monarchy of England? I've never heard of that happening in my life. So weird. Toledo has gotten massive. Galicia has gotten very strong. The Seljuks are massive, of course. Big Poland, big Lithuania, big Vladimir, big Ruthenia. Norway is united. Big Bohemia and the HRE. Huge Angria as well. That's interesting. Bavaria, province Savoy. And then we have a huge united Hungary right now, which is really interesting. Byzantium's still holding on. They've lost quite a lot of territory, but they are holding on right now, including to actually a bit of the coastline, which is surprising. The current generation of young men from Ayastio have won fame for their bravery and strength while serving my armies and garrisons, defending the locals from bandits. Strong lads. That's my favorite bonus I've ever streamed. Strong lads. The young men of this province have achieved some level of renown for their bravery and skill war. Someone tells me of a king in a faraway land who was cruel yet fair in his dealings. Once he hired an engineer to create the largest labyrinth the world has ever seen, those guilty of the worst crimes were put in this maze of tunnels and hallways, which were filled with all manner of violent beasts, as well as dangerous booby traps that could kill a man instantly. Almost none escaped, but there were always a few who had the wits and tenacity, or perhaps the luck and blessings of God, to find their way out, when the king granted freedom to those few for this impressive achievement. We're gonna get some dread out of that, I guess. We're being blackmailed. 
I know of your unusual sexual proclivities. Wait, we have unusual sexual proclivities? First I'm hearing of it. We're heterosexual. We're not a deviant. Hold on. What are we doing? I, this is the first I've heard of it. My brother, the Jedi Galu, has revealed my secret to the world to see. My natural lust and uncontrollable desires are widely known and accepted as fact. Hold on. We've been a deviant this whole time and I didn't know it? Apparently we're a sexual deviant. First time hearing of it. But, um, yeah. It's probably because we've been fucking our wife not with missionary. That's, that's... That's pretty scandalous in these times. Another dream whisked me away to a strange land where people dress in the most unsightly fashion. Their hair strung around like stones being tossed around, yet everyone seems to ignore me and go about their daily business without interruption. I walk some distance before I come to what appears to be a small tavern or establishment of some sort to meet the person I'm supposed to meet. As I enter, a voice calls to me. Fancy seeing you here of all places. It's none other than Augustino. After I take my seat by a round table, we chat about this and that and we sip a strange liquid from a ceramic cup. The drink is unlike anything I've had, and quite paradoxical. It is both black and white in color, and both sweet and bitter in taste. We're dreaming, right? Suddenly, I find myself back in my normal bed awake. I can't help but feel a sense of joy as I remember that dream nonetheless. When I discuss the dream later with Augustino, he confirms he shared the exact same dream. Whoa. Alright, we no longer have a truce with Andrea, so we are going to go ahead and conquer the last of his territory. Hold on, but before we do, we have to send him a shit-talking poem. It's tradition. We don't declare war without sending a poem to them, talking crap, so. We've sent him a poem about his own incompetence, and now we're going to conquer the last of his lands. Easily defeated in the mountains of Corsica. We'll finish the siege, and then we will form the Kingdom of Sardinia. Our ambition since we were a child. We're not the most ambitious man, but we do want to achieve some things in life. We'll upgrade the barracks in our capital while we finish this siege. And we have still have enough money left over. And the war is done. We will take everything from his family. Should mean that we can form the Duchy of Corsica. Yes, we can. And now all we need is 500 gold. And we can form the Kingdom of Sardinia. Finally, after 109 years, House Torres, starting off as a very simple Jedi and Cesari, will found a kingdom. The kingdom of Sardinia. Ooh, that's beautiful. Look at that. We are now a mighty king. We'll put up our banner. The Torres family banner on the wall. And then we'll put a... The crown of the... The height of the fabled fox right above it. That looks pretty the cool. The decision for a Catholic ruler such as I will be who exactly crowns me. Of course, the Pope would be truly illustrious, but they would no doubt ask for something in return. A priest could also be expensive, but would be in no position to demand quite so much. Well, of course, I can order any old bishop to do it, though I can imagine the whisperings of court even now. He's going to demand a lot of gold, but it's worth it. We're the first king of House Taurus. The Pope has responded to my request and has requested nothing. They have stated that they will be making their way immediately for the coronation. He's going to do it for free. Probably because our family literally founded the kingdom of Jerusalem. So, wow, that's pretty cool. I just decided how much exactly I will spend on my coronation ceremony. The more I spend, the more prestigious and lavish the affair will be, and doubtless its effects on my coffers. Still, my vassals will expect a show of wealth. We're gonna, we're gonna be very, uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna not spend a lot on it. It's a very humble ceremony oversawn by the Pope. The Pope says the words, and so do I, and a sudden solemnity falls upon my gathered court. It feels so trivial in the moment as they approach and lay the crown upon my head, as if some words will truly make me a king. But still, I cannot deny the sudden rush that hits me as I rise before my people. While I enter today a man, I now leave a true king. None can doubt my right anymore. They will be done, my liege. My steward cries out as she, he, she leaves my chambers. I get it from the chair and walk out to the balcony. Below I see thousands, all people brought to prosperity under my rule. What do I want them to remember me by? We'll go with the Benevolent. We are King Alessandro, the Benevolent of Sardinia e Corsica. A great title for a great king. My granddaughter, Adela, has been impressed with one of the household knights for a very long time. After finally meeting in person, she has been repeating the warrior's words to herself. Greatness comes in time, but there is a grasp bit when it does. We'll become stressed, but we want her to be diligent, so we'll, we'll go for that. I'm going to upgrade the trade ports. Again, we want maxed out trade ports in all of Corsica and Sardinia because we want to become the trading hub of the Mediterranean. 
That's what we're going to be doing probably in EU4 as well. It's just probably, I'm going to build tall and develop a trade empire. The cadastre completed. My friend Judas and Natalia bows briefly before me and explains with a satisfied, satisfied smile. My lord, you might remember that some months ago you invested a large sum of gold into the cadastre of your counties. I have personally supervised the matter and can proudly say that the job is done. Oh, our development just went up a lot in every county. And we got some uh, prestige. Does anyone, does anyone notice anything interesting about the eastern lands? Does anyone see anything a, a little bit weird by chance? Anything that kind of just pops out right now on the map? Also, we are able to reform the Sardinian culture. We have a lot of prestige. If we can get to 5,000, we can go with something. If we had a good ally, we could potentially win that war. Let's see. We have some children we could betroth. Princess uh, Gyanu, we could get her. Oh my god. Ambitious, diligent, and gregarious. Wow. That's just impressive. We could marry her to the uh, the king of Lyon as well. How big is Lyon right now? Not bad size. It gets involved in Iberia too. We're going to betroth her to the king of Lyon, which gives us a very powerful ally as well. Yeah, so, all right. Our really competent daughter, uh, Princess Gianu, is going to be married to King Garcia of Lyon, who is one of the Yamena family. We could also help him expand a little bit in Iberia, too, to, to push the Muslims back, because the Muslims are, are doing very, very well in Iberia right now. Which, obviously, as a very zealous, devout Christian, we would not care for. Our son has come of age. He is glowing, intelligent, lustful, impatient, and greedy. Let's find him a wife. Oh, perfect. Mayor Andaberta of Eastbrun. She is lustful as well. Arrogant, forgiving, and fecund. They're going to have a fuckload of kids. Perfect. We need more people in our dynasty. All right, we need to, we need to upgrade our, our court a little bit. We're going to make our... We'll, we'll go with decent f uh, fashion. We'll go with modest food. We'll go with few servants. And we'll give minor lodgings. All right, our daughter is going to marry to uh, King Garcia. He does not deserve her. He is content, diligent, gluttonous, and a drunk. She is ambitious, diligent, gregarious, and quick. He is really, he is really marrying up, to be honest. But we'll still do it. So we are we are now have an alliance with Ramon Berenguer the third, who is delicate and a poet. We're a poet too. Nice. Hey, we can we can have some poetry sessions together, building an absolutely very strong Sardinia. We've been called to war by Barcelona. We will, of course, come to their aid. Finally, a chance to show our love of God in combat against the heathen in Iberia. Toledo is in the war. The heathens have great armies at their disposal. What they lack is the Lord's grace with them. We're going to personally hire the Knights Templar. Once the Knights Templar have arrived, we're going to combine our army and we are going to destroy the army of the Taifa of Balencia, as well as the Emir of Toledo. This is a chance for our dynasty to grant glory through combat against the heathens. We cannot let this pass. A great host underneath my brother. We will fight him in the mountains. It matters not where we fight him, for the Lord is behind us. Forward for a Christianum. Push them out of the mountains and back into the heathen lands to the west. A great victory. No surprise. Wow, we got a lot of prestige from that. Holy crap. I'm going to chase down this army. I don't care the cost. Ah, oh, the war is over. Damn. Alright, we successfully helped the Barcelonians push back the Muslims. Uh, we managed to slaughter the army of Toledo and Balencia in the mountains of Barcelona. Given that we are basically becoming a trading kingdom, we've upgraded all of our ports and we're the biggest, probably one of the most wealthy trading hubs in all of Mediterranean. We will be able to establish maritime mercantilism in eight years. And we died. King Alessandro of Sardinia, a Corsica soul, has finally been cast to hell at 68 years of age. What are you talking about? We were a very religious man. He died gal-ridden, a zealous man. He fought for the glory of God against the heathens in one of the greatest holy wars in recent history. King Simeon ascends to the throne, a greedy man. He is unlikely to garner the favor from the peasantry of the realm. He is greedy, just, temperate, flagellant, and a thrifty clerk. 